Okay guys, so I'm revisiting how to do my henna brows. I've had a few questions from people um, to see how I did my brows. So I'm gonna do it a second time and I'm gonna do some of the things that I didn't do on the first tutorial, things that I've learned since then on how to do it. So I'm gonna use uh, the Elibana Brow Henna, the color black and the color mocha brown. So I'm gonna use these two right now. And I'm, it's supposed to be one scoop, so I'm going to use uh, three quarters of the, of the black and, uh, and one quarter of the brown in order to get one scoop. Okay, so also I'm going to use the aqua activator, which is this one right here, and I'm going to use eight drops of, of the product. I'm also going to use this eyeliner. This is a Da Vinci eyeliner. I don't know if you can see it, but I like the, the, the end of it. And I'm looking for something that's really tapered and is a little hard on the top. So this is a good one. I I'm kept this one only for to do my, my henna brows. Another thing that I'm going to use is a white liner. This one here. And this is literally in uh, to do the waterline, but I'm going to use it in order to define the shape of the brow. I'm also going to use this, and this is in order to map where I'm going to do the brow. Just like in the first tutorial, I'm going to use this and um, so that way I'll know where I need to put the henna. I'm also going to use this, this wooden stick and this is literally for, for the nails and different things like that. But I'm going to use this in order to clean anything that's underneath the brow so it can have a sharp edge. So it's another thing that I do. One of the first that I, that I did right now was that I washed my eyes. The, the hair of my eyes, I don't want any, any oils. So I have a clarifying shampoo that I usually use. Any, uh, just any, to me, any kind of clarifying shampoo, you just want to take all the oils from the brow. So that's one of the first things. And make sure it's dry. This is a scoop that I'm going to use. This is what comes with the henna brow. So these are the henna. I'm going to put um, three quarters of the black and one quarter of the, uh, the brown. I'm going to put the A drops into this container. After I put the eight drops, I mix it up, mix it up, mix it up with this here. This comes with a henna brow. And one of the most important things is that I've learned is when you're mixing it and you're gonna hear like the grittiness of the henna, you have to make sure it's soft, like almost like ketchup. So you mix it, mix it, mix it until you feel like it's soft, not grainy. You're gonna, you're gonna hear the, the noise from the henna so just mix it up until you hear that it, it's soft that you leave it here for a few uh, a few seconds before you put it on your brow if this is too runny and you put it on your brow it's literally not gonna stick that's one of the things that I've learned for the type of um, skin that I have and remember if you have very thin brows if you have like mine like mine are very thin so you're gonna be staining the skin so um, you know uh, if it's too runny it's not gonna stain and you're gonna have patches that it's not gonna take and that's kind of one of the tricks that that I've learned so here we go it's not full I call that maybe three quarters so that's the color black and I put it on this little container and then I'm gonna use the mocha brown and that's what I have and that's how much how much I have mixed together so now I'm gonna put the eight drops one two three four five six seven eight so I have the eight drops and I'm gonna mix it I don't know if you can hear it, the grittiness of the henna. So I'm gonna mix and mix. Okay guys, so this is, I just freehanded doing my brows. I kind of know how to do them by now. Uh, but if you're, you know, the first time doing it, use something like this or just a different method. Some people use like a, a ribbon, like a little piece of uh, something in order to do all the measurements. Uh, also what I did is I added an extra drop because uh, it was still a little gritty. So I added an extra drop. Like I said, the most important thing is making sure that it's not gritty. It has like a, a smooth um, to the ear when you're doing it. And it, you know, you have it uh, the consistency of ketchup. That's very important. You don't want something runny because 
it the the skin is not gonna take and again like I said if you have thick eyebrows you have no problem because you're tinting your 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 the hair but if you have thin brows then you're wanting to make sure that you're tinting the skin uh, underneath uh, the, the you know whatever little hairs or hairs you have and I'm still mixing I just want to make sure I don't hear that grittiness to to the mixture I'm gonna let it sit for a few seconds more and then I'm coming back okay guys so I'm back and this is kind of what I have and I'm about to do it I first start with the outside of it and then I go all the way inside I don't want this to be too dark you don't want to have to you know the front of it too dark unless you have no eyebrows and you want that to stain a little longer then start from there I've done it both ways I started from the front and gone to the back uh, and like I said you can start a few minutes later um, you know by taking the front off so it's not so dark or you can leave it on if you have no hair and you see I still see the grittiness of it I don't know if you can see it And there's one. I want to make sure that I soak uh, the skin in the hair. I take a little bit of it to make sure that the brush is flat with no product so I can make an edge to it. And you see that little part right there that it took? I'm gonna take my wooden one and I'm just gonna come and take some of that. There you go. And this is why I like this wood thing because I'm able to take that little part right there. You just wanna make us wanna have a smooth line. Now I'm gonna do the other one. Again, I'm gonna start from the outside. Don't put too much of it either. Another thing that I kind of do is I do the, the, the edging is what I call it. And then I fill in. You see here I'm seeing a little bit of skin right there. I'm gonna put some right there. I kind of flatten it up on my, um, um, on the container in order to be able to make a precise line. Right here, it went down a little too much. You see the, the wooden uh, stick comes in and gives it a very precise edge. Okay guys, so this is what I have so far and I'm gonna let it dry. Uh, another thing you can do is like, uh, I think about six minutes later, I can take off the front if you don't want this too dark. It depends on how much your hair you have. Uh, for people that have already hair and brows, uh, you know, you take it off. I usually leave it on because uh, I have no hairs in the front, so it helps it to stay a little longer. But I'm gonna take it off in a few minutes. I'm gonna wait for about, uh, I would say about eight to 10 minutes and, um, and take the front of it. But I usually let the whole thing dry. So this is what I have left over. I don't throw it away. I put something on top of it so it doesn't dry. I put this on top and let it sit there. After you take it off, you realize that you still have areas where it didn't take. Then I use that part of it and I, you know, and I put it, uh, I put it on those areas. So I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, guys. One of the things that I forgot to tell you was, uh, while it's drying, is make sure that you go and clean your brush. You don't want to leave it with the product. 
uh, with the henna brow because it's just gonna damage the brush. So I went and I cleaned it with the same uh, clarifying shampoo that I did my brows in order to make sure it's clean if in case I need to do it for the second time. Also, another thing that I do while, uh, what, while it's drying is I'm gonna take all the white, and remember that's all the wax, so you use this in order for the henna not to touch those areas, so I'm gonna take it off. I'm gonna use the same thing. I'm gonna try this Makeup Forever um, for the eyes, and this is to take the makeup off. And I'm gonna put it a little bit here, and I'm gonna put it a little bit on my wooden stick. I'm gonna put it in here. And it's coming off. It's coming like butter. Okay, so that works. This is something new that I never tried before. And now I have a clean edge without touching the brow. And I'm gonna start taking it off. It's already dry. So I'm gonna start taking it off. I have this little piece of paper. It's, it's not even damp, it's like barely. And I'm gonna start taking it off the front. coming off and then you're able to see a little bit of it and there it is some of the stain is supposed to get darker the more that more that you keep it the front right now it's not looking as dark but it's supposed to get darker uh, but like I said I took the front off and then I'm gonna let that sit a few more minutes and then I'm gonna take it off okay now I'm gonna take the whole thing off you see the difference so it's subtled. I could have used it. I could do another one on the on the outside. Let me maybe do another one right here. Um, and let me take the other one off. This is what I have. And I kind of like it. It's very subtle. Um, back in the days, I used to do it so dark that it did not look normal. Um, but now I've learned to... Uh, like I said, I think the most important thing is making sure that you let it dry enough that when you put the mixture, uh, you mix it well, that it's not gritty. Um, I'm going to do a second layer on the outside of it. Okay, and my brush is clean, and this is the leftover product, so I'm just going to do the outside. I'm gonna take some off again so I can have a clean edge. Okay guys, so this is what I have. This is the second time. Um, I usually do two times. Um, let me make sure everything looks good. Here. You see here, I need to put a little more on top. a little better so I'm gonna let it dry and I'll be right back okay guys so this is what I have this is kind of what I came up with after I did the second one. And definitely, like I said, I've learned a lot from the first time that I did it a few months ago, about a year ago, I think, the first time that I was able to do my henna brows. And I, like I said, I've learned a lot from um, what I did back in the days to now. Like there's a, a, a lot of different things. But this is kind of like, it's super, super natural. I can go without doing anything. Let me put a little bit of makeup and I'll be right back so you can see the eyebrows with makeup and everything else. Okay guys, so this is what my eyebrows look like. I did my makeup, I didn't touch anything around the eyebrows, but it's, I don't know if you can see it, they're darker. The, the longer that you leave them, the darker they get. Nothing. Like there's nothing there. Um, but 
I think that one of the advices that I give for someone who's doing it is um, first, like I said, take any oils that you have and use. I'm using a clarifying shampoo, and that's what's kind of helping me using the clarifying shampoo. Second, when you do the mixture, make sure that when you're mixing it, it's not gritty. It's you can hear it where it's soft. Uh, and I put eight drops, and then I put an extra drop, and then I left it. I think for me, for me, what I found out was just to let it uh, sit for a little longer uh, instead of immediately doing it. Just even after it's smooth and you, it's like butter, I let it sit just a little bit uh, before I put it on my eyebrows, and it seems like it takes even better. Uh, this, like I said, I did it twice, but they came out super, super good. And I don't know if you can see it, but it stained the skin. Let me get from close so you can see it. I put the lights a little lower so you can see it. This is nothing. I mean, this is with just uh, the henna. So, like I said, it's completely different from when I did it before. And it, I think doing that, they look amazing. I love it. I haven't done it in a while. I've been kind of lazy and I haven't been doing it. But let me put the light a little uh, higher so you can see it with the light higher. And here's what they look like with the light higher. So I don't know if you can see it. I did not touch anything. I went all the makeup. I go around it. So that's kind of what it is. In this, I can do anything. I can go anywhere with it. One of the things for me, because my skin is super, super oily, is just make sure not to touch your eyebrows. Um, and if you don't touch it, if you don't put oils, the more products that you put on your, on your, on your brows, then it's gonna take away from from the way they are. Um, another thing is, you know, um, like the first time that I did it, I put the wax or anything, any kind of uh, concealer or anything where uh, the henna is not gonna touch just the skin, and that's gonna be a barrier between your skin and um, what do you call it, and the henna brow. So uh, that's kind of the next thing. Also, using this is so important for me because this wouldn't uh, wouldn't stick. Anything, any kind of the product that goes underneath or something, I literally just kind of wipe it and make a very, very, um, what do you call it, a um, precise line. Another trick is when you're using your brush, what I do is I take the excess of the of the henna and take it on the side and make it. And so, if you take the excess, and it's gonna go lay flat, and then you can go and put like make a very, very. Um, precise line. I think if you have, maybe I'm going to get a brush that's very stiff, so that way when I do it, I can take it off and, and uh, um, what do you call it, it's going to follow the contour of what I'm, you know, what I want. But right now, like I said, these I think came out super, super good. Uh, and like I said, I didn't touch them. I couldn't touch, I, could, I couldn't put any kind of oily or anything products around it, any water or anything around it. Um, and I think I left it like that for like three days. Uh, I decided not to like uh, you know taking a shower or clean my face make sure that I don't have any any kind of products around it because remember um, this is staining the skin for someone like me and um, with oily skin so what do you call it um, I could have put a product right now like a glaze or something um, a gel or something to to but I didn't want to touch or do anything with them but I think they came out super super good I mean you know and like I said the second time that I did it I didn't use uh, the wax and the, the I went through uh, by itself I just did it with you know a hen did it like my my uh, the henna the second time because I already had the stencil where I was gonna do it but I think one of the first things is making sure that you have the, the stencil to make sure you don't have one too big or one too small but I think they came out super super good Anyway guys, thank you for watching my videos.